Will everyone please rise for the national anthem? Leading us in the national anthem is a 2002 Chicago Kent graduate, Galen Caldwell. Galen received his BA in vocal performance in 1997 from Chicago State University and currently holds the rank of sergeant with the Chicago Police Department in the Legal Affairs Division. Please welcome Galen. By the dawn's early light, 
What so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we washed were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say Or the land of the free and the home of the brave. You may be seated. Good afternoon, happy Mother's Day, and welcome to the 2017 commencement ceremony of Chicago Kent College of Law at Illinois Tech. Today, I am pleased to welcome our 2017 graduating class, as well as family and friends, to celebrate this great milestone. We celebrate your graduation as a community and know that without family and friends, this milestone would not have been possible. Joining me on the stage are Illinois Tech President Alan Cram, my colleagues, Chicago Kent faculty, as well as alumni and friends of the school. It's been an amazing year. Chicago Kent students finished second in the nation in the William McGee Civil Rights, the Evan A. Evans Constitutional, and the Andrews Kurth National Moot Court Competitions. There were top four finishes in four separate national trial advocacy team competitions, including second place in the Georgetown White Collar Competition. We received the Best Written Materials Award in the National Baseball Arbitration Competition, and even more incredible, in the first ever Fletcher Global Insolvency Competition, our team placed in the top four in the world, best in the United States. Indeed, we are, you deserve it. We are an advocacy powerhouse as a school, and I hope you come back after your graduation and volunteer to continue the tradition on. But you all, as a group, have accomplished so much more. Two of you have won national writing awards, and one of you presented an academic paper at Cambridge University. Closer to home, you have helped 600 litigants at the Self-Help Web Center, and you have volunteered thousands of hours at places such as Cabrini Legal, Cabrini Legal Aid and Equip for Equality, and you have traveled to New Orleans to help those impoverished have a chance at a better life. And all of you have gained the skills necessary to serve corporations and governments, individuals and social causes. You are well positioned to parlay those skills into professional success in a constantly changing world. Today, however, is more about beginnings than endings. I wish you well in your careers, whether in law or elsewhere, and I encourage you to use those skills you have learned ambitiously, but with integrity and civility. Commencement is a moment to pause, to be proud, to reflect on what you have accomplished and hope to accomplish in the future. It is a rite of passage steeped in history and witnessed here by those you love and by the faculty who have seen you grow into the role of attorneys and advocates. Our first speaker this afternoon represents the JD class of 2017, this year's valedictorian Simone Shinton. A first generation American from Clearwater, Florida, Simone graduated summa cum laude from Florida State University with a Bachelor of Science in International Affairs. At Chicago Kent, Simone participated in the Chicago Kent Law Review, 
Moot Court Honor Society, and trial team, including receiving the Best Advocate Award for three separate rounds of the National Pretrial Competition. After graduation, she will join Greenberg Trawick's commercial litigation practice, where she hopes to practice in the product's liability field. Simone? Class of 2017, professors, staff, colleagues, friends, and family, thank you for being here today. Happy graduation. And to my mother, I hope this suffices as a Mother's Day gift. <laughs> Much has gone into this day. Three or four years ago, we took the plunge into this grand law school experiment. We carried what felt like 80 pounds of textbooks and made the law library our new home. We began the steady process of frustrating our families by not answering their phone calls and watched our non-law school friends slowly give up on the prospect of ever hanging out with us again. We made and lost friends, started and ended relationships, gained and lost weight. We learned about the concept of a work-life balance and quickly dismissed the idea of ever achieving it. We turned our group chats with friends into free daily therapy sessions. We made jokes about anxiety to make light of the fact that we were legitimately stressed out. But we made it nonetheless. The class of 2017 comes from many different walks of life. But one thing we all have in common is that this journey has not been easy. Much has gone into this day. But much more will go into this next chapter of our lives, our careers, and this strange time where I'm allegedly supposed to start acting like an adult. As we move forward, I challenge you, as I challenge myself, not to forget just what we've achieved here today, not to forget where we come from and how we started this journey to begin with. We are immigrants, first-generation Americans, first-generation law students. We come from nothing and have created something. We come from much and have made our lot even larger. We are the children of professionals and the children of lawyers. We have children of our own. We are husbands and wives, fathers and mothers. And today, we are Juris Doctors too. Like many of you, my journey to law school began immediately after college. In fact, just 14 days after I graduated, I boarded my one-way flight to Chicago and found myself in Dean Soule's criminal law. Suffice it to say, I was shell-shocked. I learned a lot in college, namely how to make it to my 8 a.m. Friday class on about two hours of sleep, but I didn't learn much about what it meant to be a professional, nonetheless an attorney. So I was desperate to nail down a definition to slavishly follow without exception. Law students love bright line rules. In my equation for success, I equated happiness with laziness and misery with prosperity. The phrase free time became a, became a pejorative and I felt guilty if I ever wasn't doing something productive. I thought that the more overworked and stressed out that I felt, the closer I must be to success. It shouldn't surprise you to hear that I was wrong. Well, I was right that success is more often found in environments of hard work and dedication than bars, but misery is not the price to pay for success. Happiness and prosperity are not mutually exclusive. At work, I learned that success might be a joke that breaks the ice with a client. At school, I learned that success is asking your classmates for their Starbucks order in a late night in the library. I learned that figuring out that I hate an area of law is just as successful as figuring out what I actually want to practice. I found success in tears and I found it in laughter. I found it in begging my colleagues to help me understand what in the world the confrontation clause means. I even found it in doing more complaining about studying than actual studying in the ninth floor study rooms. It turns out there is no neat equation for success. Success is as diverse as we are, and we can all find it in our own paths while simultaneously enjoying the work of our hands. We have all found it today in surviving law school. To my professors that not only educated me, but genuinely made me feel like I belong, my colleagues that watched my blind side and genuinely made me better, and my friends that quite literally held me together during some of the most trying times of my life. Thank you just doesn't capture my gratitude. I have no doubt in my mind that I would not be here today 
without my friends and family who loved and believed in me when being a lawyer was just a pipe dream. Despite all the scary stories that I heard about law school, my experience has been marked by my professors encouraging me, investing in me, and truly making me feel privileged to join this profession. Many people go their entire lives never finding a career that fulfills or excites them. I am extraordinarily blessed to have found that here with you all today. It has been my life's greatest privilege to learn and grow at Chicago Kent. I wish you all continued happiness and success in both your personal and professional lives. Class of 2017, we did it. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you, Simone, for the lovely talk. This year, our LLM class speaker is Artur Shatirian, a graduate in the International Intellectual Property Law Program. From Yerevan, Armenia, Artur graduated from Yerevan State University with a Bachelor of Law in 2003 and a Master's of Law in 2005, after leading the legal departments of two large Armenian banks from 2010 to 2016, Archer took part in the School of American Law in Tbilisi, a Chicago Kent partner in the Caucasus region. He is graduating with an LLM in U.S. International and Transnational Law, and he looks forward to practicing in a multinational corporate setting. Archer? Good afternoon, distinguished friends, Harris and Drake. Professors, my fellow LLM and JD graduates, families, and friends. It's a great honor for me to stand here today and to represent LLM graduate of the class of 2017. I started my long journey to this memorable day two years ago when I took part in the pre LLM program at the School of American Law in Tbilisi, Georgia and then was admitted to Chicago Kent College of Law. It was really exciting for me to come here from Yerevan, the capital of my sweet home of Armenia, and immediately feel the crazy energy of the beautiful city of Chicago. This one year in Chicago was full of memories. I was lucky to be here to witness history when the Cubs won the World Series. I was in a bar with some of my classmates, and after the final whistle, I only remember champagne and beer falling on me from everywhere. <laughs> yeah, that was an amazing experience. <laughs> there were also many unforgettable memories related to our classes. Right from the first few days, I guess that almost all LLM students felt the same pressure of two major factors. The language barrier and the difference between American and our home country's legal systems. I remember us trying to understand the requirement of consideration in contract formation. Here is the offer, and here is the acceptance. So Dean Harris, why do we need more? Why do we need that strange element called consideration? I also can't forget the faces of my LLM classmates when Judge Erickson explained their meaning of the hearsay rule. And there, uh, and then launch into all the exceptions of that rule. Oh my gosh, that was terrible. <laughs> and Professor Convisor's memorable words during our first class of business organizations. Everything is about money. <laughs> and I immediately understood that this class is going to be very interesting. Here we are also go to, going to receive practical life lessons, the importance of which cannot be underestimated. And of course, we will never forget Professor Keller killing us with not only major writing assignments, but also small reading assignments that we received every, so what do you think? Of course, every Sunday. <laughs> we will keep these sweet memories with us forever, and now, Standing here on behalf of all graduating LLM students, from the bottom of my heart, I want to express my deep gratitude to all our, our professors. You all did an amazing, remarkable job in imparting all your knowledge to us and helping us develop our critical legal thinking skills. 
Thanks to our tremendous efforts, we managed to smoothly pass this long road full of obstacles. The knowledge we got here uh, uh, will, uh, uh, the knowledge will help us in achieving our goals, in creating a bright future for us and for our families. We will never forget this. Thank you. I want to thank my fellow students. My friends, I'm very happy that Chicago Kent gave us a wonderful opportunity to get to know each other, to communicate with people from very different cultures, to make friends from all over the world. Now I can say proudly that Chicago Kent helped us to become members of one huge family. I want to also thank my Armenian and American friends, and of course my family, my parents, my wife, my two sweet kids, and my brother. Without your understanding and support, I would never be here where I am now. Believe me, for a father, being for, uh, far from your kids and wife during this long year was the most difficult part in my journey. Finally, being a proud Armenian, I want to thank my country and my nation for providing me with the unique heritage and culture of the Armenian people and for creating me as an Armenian personality. I want to end my speech with four important messages to my fellow graduating students. Guys, always be honest, be confident, be professionals, and just be yourselves. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Artur, and to all the LLM students. And as our, our tradition, I would like to recognize a few members of the graduating JD class who in turn have been recognized by their peers for their extraordinary contributions to the school. The Bar and Gavel Awards honor those who have provided outstanding service to the college, the community, and the greater legal profession. Please stand when I call your name, but please hold your applause until the end. Caitlin Ajax, Rebecca Charles, Maxwell Eichenberger, Matthew Hamilek, Bryce Hensley, Logan Meyer, Jeffrey Mahalik, Aisha Shotande, Teresa Stark, Ryan Suniga, Kelsey Weying, and Margaret Wojcikowski. Congratulations. <clears throat> 22 guests on stage today are alumni or members of the Chicago Kent and Illinois Institute of Technology. They have the special opportunity to see their children, spouses, and other relatives graduate while serving as a legacy hooder and welcoming them to the alumni community. This special tradition allows family members to bestow the doctoral hoods on their graduates when their names are called. And they are Saloni Aurora, hooded by her father, Dr. Adarsh Aurora, and her mother, Deepti Aurora, the class of 1984. Melissa Berman, hooded by her father, Glenn Berman, class of 82. Michael Bertucci, hooded by his father, the Honorable Robert Bertucci, class of 83. Matt Cannon, hooded by his fiance, Laurel Martinez, the class of 15. Anthony DeLongis, hooded by his father, Peter DeLongis, the class of 82. I think it's one of the five members of the class of 82 who will be with us on stage today. James D. Tommaso, hooded by his father, Vincent D. Tommaso, class of 82. William Dorr, hooded by his father, John Dorr, class of 89. Jennifer Ellenby, hooded by her fiance, David Sabat, class of 15. Constance or Kelly Flanagan, hooded by her father, Thomas Flanagan, class of 63. Jelani Floyd, hooded by his cousin, Owen Shelby, class of 07. Paul King, hooded by his father, Peter King, class of 82. James Corentian, hooded by his father, James Corentian, class of 82. David Mahalik, hooded by his father, Paul Mahalik, class of 88. Jeffrey Mahalik, hooded by his father, the very same Paul Mahalik, class of 88. 
Kristen Opal, hooded by her sister, Kathleen Opal, class of 11, and brother-in-law, Brandon Dube, class of 11. Aaron Quinn, hooded by his brother, Aiden Quinn, class of 12. Daniel Rickert, hooded by his father, Edward Rickett, class of 88. Olivia Schwartz, hooded by her father, Alan Schwartz, class of 84. Andrew Sylvia, hooded by his brother, Joseph Sylvia, class of 07. David Springer, hooded by his cousin, Allison Castillo, class of 08. And Claire Stevens, hooded by her brother, Alexander Stevens, class of 14. And now, I'm privileged to introduce our commencement speaker for today's ceremony, Greg Weiler. Mr. Weiler is a 1996 graduate of Chicago Kent. Greg founded a computer company while in law school based upon new heat sink technology. And if you find him afterwards, I'm sure he'll describe heat sink technology to you. Um, but after the sale of the company, he devoted his energy and his ambition in wiring Rwanda and other rural regions to enable greater internet access. He founded his current company, OneWeb, in 2012 with the mission of enabling internet access for the entire world to end or at least to minimize the digital divide. He has raised over $1 billion and designed a system of orbiting satellites to achieve that goal of a connected humanity. No small ambition. Greg has been named one of the top 50 influencers of technology in the nation and received the Arthur Clark Innovator Award in 2015, which Amazon's Jeff Bezos won but one year later. I'm proud to introduce Greg Weiler. Thank you, Dean Krent and, and President Lamb and, uh, and the class of 2017. It's really uh, an honor to be here. Um, so, congratulations. You made it through your first years. Your past few years have been really hard, I know. I was there. Law school can be all-consuming. Today is a day to enjoy your success. You have created a great foundation to accomplish a lot in your life. You're privileged. So what now? You've molded your brains into a super athlete. You can analyze issues, sort facts, and argue in earnest for an ultimate result. How should you use all this brain power? Is there any reason to use your intellectual resources to help your neighbors, your community, or even the world? Or should you focus on the highest paying job at the biggest law firm? I thought I would share a few of my experiences and a few pieces of advice that have helped, me gui helped guide me on my path. I will intertwine these with a few quotes and bits of advice that have stuck in my mind. Maybe they'll be helpful once in a while on your own journeys. I should start with, of course, Happy Mother's Day. If you do one thing after this, thank your mom. It was my mom who urged me to graduate law school in 96. I was busy with my first company, and she was always gently pushing me to finish what I started. Be a finisher. There is the first statement that has stuck with me for a long time. Finish what you start. It's easy to start a marathon, but be the person who finishes. Let's come back to that question of what now. Another piece of advice, which interestingly was given me by Jeff Bezos, was that you can have a job, which you go to and leave at 5 p.m. You can have a career, which utilizes your studies, challenges your mind. Or you can have a calling, something which combines all of your skills and accomplishes important goals that you can look back on when you're 80 with happiness and pride. Something, something to think about as you plan your future. Have you found your calling? You probably won't find it now, but keep an eye out for that intersection of purpose, mission, and passion, because if you can find it, you'll never work a day in your life. As I mentioned, while I was in law school, I was also building my first company. I built and sold computers right out of my dorm room. My dorm was filled with circuit cards and monitors. From whole computers, I started designing parts to make them run cooler and quieter. My little company grew until I became, large, I became one of the larger suppliers to Dell and Hewlett Packard. A few years after finishing law school, I sold it, which is actually when I gave my first uh, scholarship for Chicago Kent, and I happened to meet somebody, the father of one of the uh, women in the school today who has a scholarship, so I'm glad, I'm glad it's working out. 
So a few years after finishing and selling it, I, I realized what, this is one of the places where my law degree was really helpful. It took days of negotiation, the last moments of selling the company, lots and lots of back and forth, and I was able to get right in the thick of discussions. So your law degree can be useful for many things beyond just being a lawyer. Just think about that as you go through life because it's a great, great talent that you have. The funny and important part about this company that I built is that it really didn't matter. I mean, it mattered to me, but it didn't accomplish much for the world. If it didn't exist, few lives would have been changed. So let's get back to the question of whether you should use your skills to improve the world. It turns out that if you do things for the greater good, it actually brings you the highest form of happiness. This has been validated in psychological studies. It's called eudaimonia, which means doing and living well, and was a subject of Aristotle's Nicomachean ethics. In short, the good news is that if you really want to drive for happiness, do things that help others. So after selling my first company, I decided to do something meaningful. I went to Africa and started connecting schools to the internet. I literally hired a bunch of people and started running fiber in the most remote parts of Africa. There were times we'd have 3,200 people trenching the roads. You'd drive for kilometers, and there'd be people with shovels up and down the roads building their own infrastructure. What I learned was amazing. If given the tools and the opportunity, people wanted to help themselves. More amazing was the impact this had on their own lives and their community at the same time. With access to the world's information, people had the opportunity to learn about clean water. They could educate themselves after, about building their own businesses and understanding their government, civics, jurisprudence, and the foundations of intellectual freedom came to be. This brings me to my next statement. Pick your mission. I found mine. It was to help give everyone in the world access to the internet. Today, there are still over 4 billion people in rural and emerging markets without access. There are people just like you and I. Many are suffering with poverty, disease, and without information, an inability and an inability to have a stable government. As a thought experiment, think about this. Are we really any different? Suppose we took each of you, we went back in time, and you grew up without any internet. You had no ability to answer the question why about the world around you. Who would you be today? Well, for sure you wouldn't be sitting here because for one reason, you couldn't access the online application. So what I found was that the they without internet was just us without internet. It's a problem we can solve. And solving it is right at the intersection of technology, policy, and law. So for the past 15 years, I've been pounding away at this problem. I started the small scale of running fiber and 3G networks to schools in Africa. Then I found no matter what I did, the internet had a lot of delay because to get to the internet, the signals had to travel tens of thousands of miles into space and ricochet back to Earth by older geosatellites. The newer cloud-based applications, which have a lot of back and forth between your computer and the servers, wouldn't work. Everyone I was connecting was quickly becoming a second-class web citizen. So I designed a new satellite system which brought the satellites closer to Earth. I called it O3B Networks, which stands for the other three billion. My legal education was incredibly valuable here. I studied international law and spectrum rights. I dug into technology policy and intersected with the UN, ITU, and intergovernmental agencies, all to solve the problem of making the internet available to those without access. This brings me to my next point. Your mission should intersect with your passion. In this case, I wanted to flip satellite design on its head. Normally, satellites are expensive, so the ground terminals can be cheap. Think of direct TV terminals that are a few hundred dollars. However, my idea was to build cheaper satellites with more expensive terminals to serve telecom operators. So I was at a crossroads. I knew this would get us closer to solving the access problem, but I had to raise about $1.5 billion. And I had to do that to build a system with a new unproven technology in an unclear regulatory environment to provide internet access to the poorest communities of the world who didn't have money to buy the services. Despite knowing that failure was not only an option, but probable, and with the encouragement of my wife, and knowing this is something which should be done, I went for it. Now, designing and building a satellite system is really fun, and even more motivating when the mission is so important. With the help of the government of France, who backed about 800 million of our loans, and with the International Finance Corp, African Development Bank, and many other investors, we raised the money and built the system. Today, telecom operators around the world, including Africa, Middle East, South America, and over half the Pacific Island nations receive internet through O3B networks. I should note that the company was profitable in its first year and has since paid back its debt. After building the system and taking a little time off, I realized the mission was not complete. 
there were still 4 billion people unconnected. Remember, pick a mission which intersects with your passion. And also, be a finisher. Now, this mission is a bit big. It's a life's work. Why? Because I think it's one of the most important things we can do for humanity. Internet access is a tool which allows minds to grow, work together, and improve your lives at the same time as they improve the lives of others. If you look at the 17 Sustainable Development Goals recently outlined by the UN, every one of them requires internet access. Clean water, the logistics here are enormous. Decent work and economic growth in every instance of society, increases in communication also increase GDP, providing jobs and growth. Peace, justice, and strong institutions, Everyone here knows how important communications and internet access is to civic understanding, justice, and due process. Back to the mission. How do we solve it? I moved on to the last step of the plan. I founded a company to enable access for every school and ultimately every remote and rural village of the world. With hundreds of like-minded, eudaimonically happy people, we are passionately striving to create near infinite and ubiquitous bandwidth, which can be delivered to small, affordable internet access hotspots mounted on any roof. As I've highlighted, four billion people are living without access. We can bring everyone onto the same web. One web will bring equal performance for everyone. This system will include over 2,000 ultra-high throughput satellites. By 2025, we'll be able to support one billion internet access hotspots and many billions of end users. While you may use this for your own internet access and find it as good as anything you've tried, mostly designed for the unconnected, poverty-stricken billions. Even here in the United States, over half of the homes are without access to broadband. Rural populations across the country suffer intellectual flight as the youth move to find work where there is also communications. So this is a big dream, but over the past two years, we've raised about 1.7 billion, and the first satellites are launching in the next 10 months. So many people have come together to make the system reality it has been inspiring and exciting. Together, we believe we can fully bridge the digital divide by 2027. So, coming back to you, find your mission. Perhaps it's international technology policy, internet privacy, or human rights. Or maybe it's not even related to law. My advice is do something you believe in. If you can weave a mission with your passion, you will find your calling. So, you should, use your highly so should you use your highly trained brains to help others, even devote your life to it? It's probably the surest path to happiness and success. Greg has set an amazing example for all of us. Merge your passion and your skills to help others. Uh, that's a great short way of saying um, do good in the world. And I hope many of you can stand in his footsteps and internalize those lessons. Ladies and gentlemen, it's with great pleasure now that I present the 2017 graduating class of Chicago Kent College of Law, starting with the candidates for Doctor of Juridical Science, and followed by the Master of Laws and then the Juris Doctor degrees. I call upon Dean Catherine Baker to introduce the individual graduates. Thank you, Dean Krent, and greetings to our graduates and guests. Only the names of those graduates who are present today will be read and I ask you to please hold your applause until all candidates have received their degrees. First, I have the honor of introducing the 2017 recipients of the Doctor of the Science of Law degrees. Jing Meng Tsai, Chang Long Ma. Next, I have the honor of presenting the 2017 recipients of the Master of Laws degree in U.S. International and Transnational Law, Financial Services Law, International Intellectual Property Law, 
taxation and trial advocacy for international students. Receiving the degree of Masters of Laws in U.S. International and Transnational Law, Audrey Benzow, Carolina Campo, Marcin Zaplansky. Saeda Sophie Darush, Ning Ding, Yingjong Ding. Ior Dmitriev, Salome Ebenadza, Miriam Elibikian. ZJ Fan. Maximilian Franck, Alexandra Galber. Gvansta Gamashar Vasteli. Georgi Goshadza, Longqing Chan. <laughs> Hyun Guo. Evgeny Yurchenko, Peiming Huang, <laughs> Hao Peng Zhang. Lei Jin, Shofion Jin, Wessel Juma, Philip Krogler. G. Lee. <laughs> Piqui Lee. Shang Lee. Yi Yu Lee. Maxim Lochuk, Yan Lu, Yi Cho Lu, Christina Luchka, Yong Mei Ma. Jamal Mamachutta.
Lasha Divani, Tekla Modabadzja, Ju Sorry. Pim Takin Nyung Funsak. Tatu Akrusvili, Ayor Petrov, Miriana Plaza Gimon, Marta Savitska, Ruchak. Saxena Arthur Shatirian Tamar Shvangin Radsta Laung Dao Santi Dumrung Fan Tanya Tongvorachai <laughs> Ani Chalitza Ite Umar Chuyu Wang <laughs> Dihi Wang Katerina Verber Jiafong Hu Bo Cheng Fenwa Cheng Jenrui Cheng Liping Chang Receiving the degree of Masters of Laws in Financial Services Law, Aleda Gonzalez. <laughs> Sam Patil. Shahayat Kohli, Sandra Schwinn, Yayu Wang, Sujia Chan, Tong Zhang, receiving the degree of Master of Laws in International Intellectual Property Law, Ching Do. Ning Chia. 
Chung Jun Lee, Hing Wa Lee, Hya Dong Liu. You fear Liu. Did I not? I didn't read till I knew. All right. Dong Kwa Niu. Baranti Ramesh, Michael Reed, Nina Sass. Aluatosin Sanjo Shodimu, Jonas Smeets, Shongping Wang. Cheng Han Xiao, Tan Yan, Yujia Yang. Chong Son Yu, Eleanor Zakain, <laughs> Fanhua Cheng. No. Yanya Chang. Receiving the degree of Masters of Laws in Trial Advocacy for International Students, Alisa Zenner. Our final Master of Law graduate, receiving the degree of Masters of Law in Taxation and the Juris Doctor degree, Robin Lang. This concludes the presentation of the candidates for the Master's of Laws degree. I now have the honor of presenting the 2017 recipients of the Juris Doctor degree. For those fall graduates who have taken and passed the bar exam, I will append Esquire when calling their names. Again, please hold your applause until the names of all the candidates have been read. Caitlin Ajax. Farah Albazaz. Masood Ali. Gabriel Alvarado, Salani Aurora,
Linu Oxtolis. David Barr. Dion Beatty. <laughs> Melissa Berman. Michael Bertucci, William Batit, Jessica Beal, Yekaterina Boshkova, David Braden, Juan Branderes, Terrence Brennan. Jenna Bressel, Maxwell Brooks, Anna Buskila, Alyssa Busi. Aiden Butler. <laughs> Michael Cannon. Sarah Casey. Cassandra Castillo. Alicia Chambers, Rebecca Charles, Fidel Chavez, Mingru Chen, James Connolly, Rachel Covey, Kelsey Cox. Courtney Cronin, Miranda Crowell, yeah. Jeffrey Curley, 
Mark Dasher, Nicholas De Bruni, Darcy Decker, Catherine Del Rosario, Anthony DeLongas, Nicholas DeRick, Keith Detweiler, Heriberto Diaz El Cantor, George Diegas, James Di Tommaso, William Dorr Esquire, Lauren Dokes, Eric Donofrio, Tyler Ethington, Maxwell Eichenberger. Jennifer Ellenby, Adam Farag, Connor Fitzpatrick, Constance Flanagan. Kelly Flavin Esquire, Brindley Flesher. Jelani Floyd, John Fox, Anthea Fuentes. Andrew Fullett, Emily Gure Izquierdo, Logan Gianquinta. Dragon Georgiev, Jeffrey Goldberg Esquire, Edward 
Goikum. Diana Guler. Elena Gunn. Eric Gustafson, Lauren Gutierrez, Monica Gutierrez, Nathan Hakimi. Alexander Halaska, yeah. Matthew Hamelin, <laughs> Kirsten Hansen. Megan Hines Esquire, David Hines, Brian Helwig, Bryce Hensley, Haley Herkenbach. Alyssa Hurdle, Ruth Hill, Brittany Hawk, Stephen Hoffman. Rebecca Horgan, Lindsay Humes, Amina Husani, Rachel Irwin. Irina Ivanova, Kyle Jacob, Benjamin Jacobs, Hervé Shaku. Andrew Joseph, Alyssa Jutovsky, Nairupa Kartha, Warren Katz, Zartush Kadavande, Mark Kefarkas, Christopher Kim. 
Jenna Kim. Paul King. Matush Kita. James Corentian Esquire. Taylor Kasla. Dylan Kossin Healy. Aaron Kufis. Stephanie Langley. Dahlia Labrador Herraro. Catherine Larson, Alexander Lee, Quan Wu Lee, Andrew Leach. Nicholas Leonard. Zachary Levy. Yelena Libby Esquire. Emily Linehan. Jing Lu. Christina Makrovich. Manuel Madu Mandujano. Gemma Markham. Stephanie Lagone Martinez. Logan Meyer. David Mahalik. Jeffrey Mahalik, Alexander Michelini, Tyler Mikan, Danielle McHale, Nicole Murphy, Brendan O'Brien. William O'Dofen. Brian.
Lynn O'Donnell. Ina Olesnicki, yeah. Paige Olson, Kristen Opal, Deanna Ortiz. Isabella Ortiz. Melitza Pagan Lopez Esquire. Joseph Papuzzi's Erica Parsons Nilu Parvez Maitri Patel Esquire, Mega Patel, Miles Peralta, Hung Thang. Albert Plowinski, Nicholas Pratton, Rebecca Premo, Frank Pucci, Brett. Pufal Esquire. Aaron Quinn. April Ramirez. Mark Real. Elizabeth Riley, Alexander Reitzner, Brooke Reynolds, Danielle Rickert. Megan Ramofsky Esquire, Woo! Courtney Rodman, Woo! 
Mark Rogers. Ashley Rovner. Brian Sable. Daniel Sanders. Michael Sanderson. Olivia Schwartz. <laughs> Thomas Schweitfeger Kelly Scott Alexandria Seidel Corey Shadowitz, Simone Shinton, Michael Shoemaker, Aisha Shotande. Andrew Sylvia Alexander Sivaranov Sivaranov sorry Daniel Smart Juan Solis David Springer Teresa Stark, Nick Steidel, Claire Stevens Esquire, Blake Stewart, Marjan Sultani, Ryan Suniga, Megan Sweeney. Catherine Taylor, Josephine Toya, William Trong, Skylar Ufkis. Valia Barbanova, Karen Vaisman, Valeria Velasquez, Christina Vetterick.
Rebecca Wagner Esquire, Jeffrey Weil, Sander Weiner, Kelsey, Kelsey Wayne. William Whitner, Margaret Wokowski, <laughs> Stephanie Wolf. Lauren Wright Esquire, <laughs> Carolyn Yunin, Jonathan Zarati. Vesta Zavista Skata. Amy Zaid. Minwi. Cho. We are delighted to have Illinois Tech President, you guys can sit down, <laughs> Illinois Tech President Alan Cram here with us for the conferral of degrees. Will all the degree candidates please rise? <laughs> by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Illinois Institute of Technology, I can confer upon you the degree of Master of Laws or Juris Doctoris and admit you to all its rights, privileges, and obligations. Please join me in congratulating the class of 2017. Okay, you may be seated. I want to thank our staff for their hard work in facilitating this graduation and for ensuring that we have such wonderful weather outside. But I also want to acknowledge the retirements this year of five, six long-term faculty members. Ralph Brill, Howard Eglett, David Rudstein, Ron Stout, Mary Rose Truby, and Dan Tarlock, and I'm delighted that Ron and Ralph are with us today. Together as a group, they have served the school for over 200 years, and they've served it, not each, not each, um, and they've served it with outstanding scholarship, excellent teaching, and innovative programs. The school will not be the same without them. Before we conclude, would our new graduates stand up turn around, face your family and friends, and let them know how much you appreciate their support over the years.
So that concludes the 2017 Chicago Kent College of Law commencement. It does not conclude Mother's Day yet. But I ask the audience to please remain seated until the academic recessions concludes and enjoy outside in the beautiful weather. Take care. Thank you.